Interesting, I just checked the fuel. And I thought, wow, I can't believe there's not even a drop of moisture in there. I smelled it, it smelled like fuel, but I dumped it out. And I could tell by dumping it out. Actually, what was in my tank was water. So what we do when we pre-flight aircraft, we drain the water that accumulates in fuel naturally. And then possibly through leaking through the uh, fuel caps up on top. And fuel, I understand, naturally is absorbent of water. And then water exits out through, out to the bottom and accumulates in the tank. So I had a full, full, uh, whatever you call this thing. I should know. A full straining tube of water. I'm going to do another one. I need to get all that water out. This step is fundamental to pre-flight an aircraft. Without this, the aircraft won't operate. If, uh, if it does operate, then it finally consumes the water. Uh, so this is key to safety. It's not to scare you. It's just to show that if the right steps are taken, uh, things can be avoided. So, so far, that's my third draining, and I only see a slight bit of fuel at the top. I'm not dumping gasoline on the ground. I'm dumping water. Now we have half fuel, half water. We have to, for safety reasons, dump this out. But what we're going to do, we're going to go green, and I'm going to get and we're gonna, there's a new product out that will actually separate the water for the fuel so I can tour it back in safely. But because of safety reasons, I can't put this fuel back in the engine. However, the fuel does not get in, does not, from the airport, actually goes on the tarmac and evaporates. So it's d damage to the environment is minimal. Still, it's, even a minimal is not acceptable. So what air, some airports have done, and some pilots, and what we're, we're gonna, we can do this as well, is we can get a, a, a little gas tank and you pour the fuel in there, and sometimes they have them uh, nearby for pilots to use. The main concern of the government right now is that life Life is critical in the plane, so they won't, don't want to discourage people from straining their fuel. But they do recommend that they don't pour it in the grass. They pour it on cement. And this uh, fuel evaporates very quickly. If you do have extra, if you do have water in your fuel, you have to take extra steps to make sure you do a couple of extra strains to get it all out. So we're clean now. But now we do one last thing. We do a little tapping on the tank. If there's any bubbles, we get that. And our strain is at the most bottom part of the tank. And the water is clean. I'm going to dump this one back into the tank to protect our environment. When water gets ingested into the engine, the engine stops. It's as simple as that. And in the wintertime, that will freeze. So that becomes a problem as well. It will freeze not as a block of ice, but rather ice crystals. So we'll see those in the, uh, in the water, in the, uh, when we strain it out and get all those ice crystals out. Okay, we just finished washing the airplane. I'm talking loud because I'm not wearing the mic. And one thing you have to, even though we pre-flighted the airplane, we're ready to go flying, there's one important step we have to do over again, and that's check the fuel for water. I'm checking to make sure during the washing process of spraying the hose and washing the fuel cap area that none of the water got into the aircraft. We're clean. And we pour the uh, fuel back into the tank because it's good. Well, that's it, kids, for another episode of Todd's Pilot Channel. Remember, get that water out of the tank using your fuel strainy thing. <laughs>